Hi everyone, welcome to Rose Hip Knits podcast episode 119. My name is Hannah and I am recording this mostly knitting podcast from northern Tasmania in Australia. I am a Swedish expat and I live here with my husband and our two daughters and I love to knit and I love everything that is wool and yarn and craft. And this podcast is an opportunity for me to talk about those things that I really enjoy and love and to share them with other people that also feel the same way that I do. Um, I am in my studio today. I am standing up for a bit of a change. Um, I have had a big clean out of my studio in the last week after I had sent off all my advent calendars. And 12 days of Christmas, I did a big clean, tidied, organized, and now I have my big sewing table and um, free again. And I've been able to put my tripod with a camera on top of that, and I can stand up for a bit of a change. Um, I forgot to say that you can find me as Rose Hip Chick on Instagram and on Ravelry. Both of those places are good platforms to get hold of me if you have any questions or you just um, would like to send me a message. You're also very welcome to put uh, comments um, below on YouTube. I always enjoy reading your comments and um, yes, I have I have learned things from the comments and I have found new things when I have read comments. So yes, I really enjoy reading your comments. Uh, I do have a, a shop where I sell my hand-dyed yarn and you can find that by going to rosehipisland.com and on that website I have my shop, I have links to the videos I have on YouTube and I also have a little bit of a blog um, going on <laughs> on there. Uh, it's mostly when there's something um, specific that has happened that I'd like to tell people about if there's a, a new yarn base or something in my shop. But it's definitely a place to um, check out if you're interested to know more about my small business or um, about me really. So welcome everyone. Um, I am really happy to have you here. I'm really happy to be recording another episode. It wasn't that long ago that I uploaded an episode to YouTube but I did have some issues again with uploading it so uh, it took a few days after I recorded it before it was actually available on YouTube. So it has been um, about two weeks now since I recorded. So I feel like I have a few things to share with you, which is great. Okay, so that's who I am, where I am, where you can find me. Yes, let's just get straight into um, what I would like to share with you today. I have quite a bit of knitting to share with you. I have been doing some mending and I have a tiny bit of um, dyeing and shop news to share with you at the end of this episode. So let's get started. First, I'm going to have a sip of my tea. I have an um, oolong tea today, which is quite nice and refreshing. I'm going to be careful to not step too close to the camera <laughs> now that I'm um, uh, filming this way. It's a bit like having a, like holding a presentation or something. Um, but it's nice to just do it a bit differently. Okay, well, let's start with one of, well, the obvious thing. What I'm wearing. I am wearing my Miss Arena tea by Caitlin Hunter, who is Boyland Knitworks. I, I think I was almost finished with this when I recorded last time. No, I think I had a sleeves left to do maybe last time. Um... So this is the Miss Arena, and I knit this using my uh, Merino linen singles um, that I have dyed up in the night colorway and in the Pinot colorway. Let's see if I step to the side here. You can see these are my leftovers. So I think I used 1.8 skeins of the night for the main color and only about 30 grams of the Pinot for the color work. And... I can't remember exactly what which size I did, second or third size. All the details will be on Ravelry if you're able to go and have a look on Ravelry. I put all my details for all my projects on there. Um, if you would like more information, just um, 
send me a message. <laughs> so, um, it is really, really lovely. This was so much fun to knit and the body um, went much faster than I expected it would. Uh, there's two options in the pattern for the main body after you finish the colour work. Well, there's a bit of lace and a bit of cables and a bit of colour work, so there's a lot going on in the yoke. But then for the body, there's an option of doing eyelets, so you get like a lacy, I think evenly distributed holes, basically, in the body. Or you can do what I did, and that's doing some textured, so basically it's some pearl stitches um, every so often in there to create a bit of a uh, texture in it. Um, I love this yarn, both um, the base and how it's, both how it's wearing and feeling and how it knit up and how it creates um, a bit, uh, creates a bit of a different look than if you knit with a straight sock yarn or, or a straight wool yarn. Because it has 10% linen in it, it gives it a bit more, um, it's textured look. Um, and a bit more change in the colour because the linen doesn't take the dye. So I'm, I'm very happy with the yarn base and I'm also super happy with the colours that I chose to use for it. And when I was knitting it I thought well I don't really know what size it will end up being um, but I just kept going and I, I did try it on after I had finished the top part and I knew that it would fit me and then I just knitted straight down as per the pattern. I did it a bit longer than the cropped um, length in the pattern. I did the I did the sleeves according to the pattern, and uh, yes, it's uh, it's great. I think it fits really well, and um, and like with other t-shirts that I have made using a woolen yarn. I was a bit unsure about how and when to wear it. I thought, do I wear it under a, um, some sort of a jacket or a cardigan? Or can I just wear it like it is with a t-shirt or singlet under? And um, it's actually been fine now in springtime and we're getting quite warm weather now. I know it will cool down again, but it's been, you know, some days 25 degrees and I have actually really enjoyed wearing this when it's not super hot but it's you don't really need to have long sleeves so I think I'm surprised with how wearable it is both the yarn and the garment like it's it's just turned out so much um better than I expected I knew it would be a fun knit so I wanted to I wanted to make it because it looked like a really fun knit um Yes, I'm so I'm just really happy with how it's turned out. It's actually a garment that I can quite easily wear and I think it looks really nice. So that's my Miss Arena. <laughs> okay. And what else? Okay, other things that I have finished since last time are my Petty Harbour socks. You will know if you have watched my podcast before that I have joined in with Kia's uh, Free Socks 2020. Kia chooses a pattern, a free pattern each month for this year, 2020. And uh, everyone who participates tried to knit that pattern within the month. And when I last recorded, it was towards the end of October. And I had done a little bit or half my first sock or something like that and I had um, less than a week to complete the the pair and um, I think I had completed the first sock when there were two days left in October so I had two days to knit my second sock and I think I just got so motivated and just got um, yes a bit um, Got a bit of a push, I guess. Um, there's nothing like a deadline to get me do, doing things. So I had a two days to need the second sock and I had it done. And I still had one day to go. So I need my second sock in one day. So 
these are the Petty Harbour socks and they are patterned by Raina Curtis, free pattern. And I need these in a sock yarn for another from another crafty girl who is an, um, a US dyer. And this was a skein of yarn that I received in a giveaway uh, from um, Skein Enable podcast. I can't remember if it was an itch along or if it was just a, a giveaway. And I think they knit up pretty cool. And I also entered this in the 2020 Knit All the Colours that Kristen of Skein Yarn is hosting on her Ravelry group. And the colour for October was a green yellow and there's a bit of sort of green yellow here and there so that's the socks for that so yes i really um did some speed knitting to get these done i think that this sock yarn is on the thicker side so it didn't it felt like it knit up quite quickly i did a fish lips kiss heel for them i don't think that was in the pattern but I, that's what i chose to do so that's the thing that I finished. I have finished my Radvent cardigan by Amber O'Brien, but that will be something that I can show you on Christmas Day because it's knit up in my Advent calendar minis. And just yesterday, I um, wove in all the ends on it, so it has 25 minis and the 100 gram skein color so that's 26 uh, different colors so you can imagine how many ends i had to weave in but i did that yesterday and now it's blocking so i'm very excited about that another thing that i had finished knitting last time but was still not not finished finished um was this flax by tin can knits that I knit in a cream colored Bendigo Woolen Mills um, luxury fingering weight and some um, mohair silk that I have dyed up myself. The cream one is the Cottage Garden that came out without uh, much, you can't really see it in the camera, but it has um, some speckles of pink and green, but it didn't have as many speckles as I wanted to for the colorway so I um, just used it myself and then I had a, sort of a yellow highlighter green highlighter yellow green highlighter color <laughs> uh, and a um, sort of a rose pink and I knit up a flax in the ladies extra small to fit my 12 year old I talked about this in my last episode um, uh, so I knitted, I found a few tutorials because I wanted to make a cardigan and I couldn't find cardigan pattern so I decided to knit the flax and seek it. And Tin Can Knits who made the flax pattern, they have a tutorial on their website about seeking. I also had a look at some um, crafty classes. I have an annual subscription to Crafty, crafty now that they've started up again and they had this really good deal. Um, I checked out a few few videos there and I found some other tutorials on both on YouTube and just on blogs and I managed to uh, put in my extra stitches and then I did all of the button bands and I had all that done last time I recorded a video and um, a lot of people have have commented and said that oh how, how did you put the button bands in before you did speaking and um, I, th I think I have just seen it done both ways and I don't know I think especially Swedish podcasts that I watch they from memory they have put in the button bands before they cut the stick so I don't know if it's just different in sort of different countries or it just depends on what designers um, patterns you normally use I don't know but um you know, someone asked me, how did you do it when you did it before you cut the jumper? And I think you just do it exactly the same way as if you, as if, as if, if you do it after you cut. But I had all that done and now I have all cut it open.
and I have since woven in all the ends and I think it looks really nice and tidy I did do the machine um, stitch on either side of the stick so first I did the crochet um, re reinforcement and then I did a, a stitch a, a seam on my sewing machine uh, on either side of that and then I just cut in the middle of the crochet chains and uh, yes it looks really so I have this bit here on each side and it does just fold in it naturally lies flat behind but I think what I have to do is to sew sort of tuck that in and sew it down mostly to protect it from fraying I don't know how secure this is um, if it's going to unravel or I don't know um, but it's lying down nice and flat so I think I will just sew that in so it's nice and, and tidy flat on the back um, and I don't think I'll put any what are they called cross grain, grain ribbon or bias tape or anything I think I'll just leave it the way it is I'll see and I told you last time that I had uh, found some buttons for it and I actually have those here so I have these buttons I think will go really well so yes I have that's what I have left to do sew in the buttons and tuck that in and sew it up I haven't done it yet because I wasn't sure that's the best way to do it so if anyone out there has um, suggestions or advice let me know but that's that one and my daughter really loves it because it has mohair silk so it's like wearing a cloud um it is it's a nice wide fit for her but it's actually a bit shorter than I expected it would be but I haven't washed it yet and because it is super wash it might grow a bit lengthwise so we'll see but that's I mean the knitting is is done it's basically done I just have to do the last bit of finishing but I did weave in all the ends which is just amazing <laughs> and when I was on this um finishing and um weaving in ends um mood <laughs> or what should we call it I was just um doing really well with weaving in ends and finishing things that I, it's normally th something that I just leave until I really need to do it so I decided to tackle um a jumper that I made in I think I finished it in January this year and I had it lying um just in a bag with my knitting stuff next to the sofa waiting for the ends to be woven in and during the pandemic and when we were at home doing sue meetings and all those things i decided to use one of those sue meetings as some time to weave in ends on on this jumper and I did weave in all the ends and then I discovered that it had an area where it had um, got stuck in something or something had happened so there was a hole and I had never I had not worn it I worn it for photos for Ravelry but it never I didn't weave in the ends. so when I finally wove in the ends I discovered it was damaged so this is the jumper it's the Fenmont by Emily Walton I think yes um, and I knit this in three different Donegal tweed skeins from a uh, color girl collective and I can't remember the colorways now but they're beautiful 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 and the Fenmont is um, it's just a plain top-down circular joke yoke yoke um, 
jumper and you do a pearl row every so often and then I sort of faded in the different colors and I think it's a free pattern I definitely got it for free but it might have just been a temporary thing so I did that it has only three quarter sleeves um, but anyway it had a hole right here at the front let me see if I can find it uh, no because that's the back here it's the front and it's good if I can't find it here I had to can you see it oh yes you can see right on this pearl row here I had to pick up and undo I think three rows and then I wove in those three strands and then I picked up and I knit one, I think I picked it, um, I knit a, a knit row and the pearl row. And then I had a knit row up here and that one I just kitchened. So it ended up being the three rows that I had pulled out. I'm probably not explaining that in a very, <sighs> in a way that's easy to understand. But you can, it's good that it's a Donegal tweed and it's, hand dyed and you can't really can't really see it especially not from a distance but yes I did undo about 10 centimeters three rows and then I picked well I took those live stitches on either end and then knit two rows and then Kitchener one to patch it up and now I can wear it I was uh, very I was a bit hesitant to doing the fix because I thought it would be I wasn't sure how to do it and if I would do a good job but in the end I thought I'll just do it <laughs> and I did and now I have been wearing it and um, it's great it's been another great one for warmer weather because it has a three three um, yes it has a shorter has a shorter sleeve three quarter sleeve um, it's really good for when it's um, warmer but you can still wear a um, jumper. So, yay, finally I can wear it. You know, it's a few, 10 months later, I think <laughs> it is now. And I still have quite a bit of these skeins left. Do I have them here? Here's the pink one. So I do have quite a bit of them left so I can do something else fun. But that's my mending. So yes, I've just been really enjoying is maybe taking a bit too far, but I have um I have found it quite satisfying to do finishing and weaving in ends and uh, mending things. So next thing now that I would like to get motivated to do is to do some mending of some socks because I have found now after making socks for I don't know how many years at least 10 years more than 10 years now I have found that I have some socks from early on that have um, some damage to them they've been a bit worn so they need some mending and uh, it's questionable if it's actually worth it because I have a lot of socks um, but I don't know how I would feel about just throwing them out because most of the sock is perfectly fine so it depends on how long I let them sit there without doing anything with them if they sit for too long I think they'll just have to go out okay well then of course with all the finishing I have been doing I have also been starting up some new projects uh, let's start with the free socks 2020 for November because I was so late with my October socks I thought I'd better start my November socks before um, we're too far into <laughs> November so um, the pattern for November is socks on a plane and that is a pattern by Laura Lindemann of the Knit Girls podcast and some of my first socks were the socks on the plane 
pattern and um, I, I'm not sure if in the pattern it's to, you, it has instructions for two at a time but they're toe up socks and they're quite plain but they have a cable a small cable going up the side and um, I know that when I started knitting socks I did often two at a time and toe up so that's what I did so I have two pairs that I have made um, a long time ago one pair made out of drops fable and one pair made out of some sock yarn from spotlight and I wear these socks a lot and they have held up really really well um, because that's just really hardy sock yarn I guess um, but I was quite happy that the, this was the pattern for November because I think they're a great pattern to knit and I also really enjoy wearing the socks that I have already made using the pattern. And then I had a look um, at the Skein Yarn Ravelry group to see wh which was the colour for November for the 2020 Knit All The Colours and the colour for November is brown. So I went looking in my stash to see what I could found that was brown. And one of the skeins that I found, I think I had two skeins with brown because it's not my go-to color. But one of the skeins that I found that had brown was this. It's the Mondim Portuguese Sock Yarn. So it's made out of 100% Portuguese wool. And it is meant to be hard wearing and suitable for socks and a great alternative to all natural socks, no nylon, and this is what it looks like. I got this uh, in a D stash, and um, I don't know if you can buy it in Australia. I don't think so. Um, that's what I normally do. I have a bit of European and especially Scandinavian yarn because that's something that I really enjoy to knit with. Um, a lot of it you can't get hold of here. And I don't, I mean, I have been buying when I have been to Europe a little bit, but mostly what I do is that when people sell their yarn in a D stash on Ravelry, if it's something that I know I can't get hold of in a, um, a shop in Australia, and it is something that I have really wanted to try, or just a yarn that I enjoy working with, then I'll, I'll get it from the D stash. And that's what I did with this one. I had heard a lot about the Mondim um, sock yarn and I had I found, I think, I have three of these from different D-stashes, so um, I picked those up from a D-stash. So that's something I can recommend, but please don't buy all the special <laughs> European yarn that I want to buy from a D-stash. But yes, it's definitely... D-stash is good because you can be, pick up bargains, but it's also really good for finding things that you can't normally um, find. So here's my first sock. And you see how funny this is? It's coming out as striping. I didn't really like the look of this in the skein. I think it, like this type of speckling looks like it has some sort of disease or something. But um, I really like how it's knitting up. And it's really fun how it actually has a little bit of a stripe to it. So here's a little cable down the side. And I'm now at the point where I'm going to start the heel. And I'm going to do a fish lips kiss heel. I don't know that that's the one. I don't. I think it's a different short row heel in the pattern. Can't remember. But I quite enjoy doing the fish lips kiss heel on these ones. And I can do it now without thinking very much. So that's what I'll do. And um, yes, I'll just keep working on those and hopefully <laughs> finish them with a bit of, of time to spare. And then there's only the December socks left for this year for the Free Socks 2020. And um, yes, I'm curious to see what that pattern will be. And the color for 2020 Knit All The Colors is I think gray, black or white or gray, or one of those, but um, I think when I have completed my November socks, I think I'm actually going to treat myself to some new sock yarn to fit in um, with the skein yarn knit along. So yes, I think I'll treat myself to a skein yarn 
sock skein if Kristen has something suitable in in the black white or gray I have to check exactly what it is so um I think she has the colorway called April Skies so I think it might be suitable and it's very beautiful so we'll see um but that's something that I'm working on I've mostly been working on it when I've been um passenger in the car and going place and then what else something I told you last time that I was going to um start I had last time I had finished a fits the whole fam hat a beanie that is a ribbed beanie holding three fingerings um weight yarns together and I also had a mohair with it and um you hold that together and just do a one by one rib and it makes it a, a really nice stretchy hat that fits the whole fam. It's a pattern by Cozy Outfits, and I have started a second one because I want to have a few of them and just pop them in the car. And if we're somewhere and anyone needs a beanie, there's some to choose from, and they will fit anyone who needs a beanie. Um, so I think I had a few options that I shared with you last time, but I changed it up a little bit. So I am using these three skeins. So this is a skein yarn. I don't have much left of that one now. This is, I think, Dying to Dream. Do I have to? I think it's Dying to Dream. Dying Dream. I made a pair of socks out of this rainbow yarn. And then this is a commercial baby merino yarn. Can't remember if it's click heaton or what it is. And then also a pink um, mohair silk. So they're the skeins I'm using. And I have come a little bit on the way on this. That's what it looks like. Once I started knitting on the, I think I, I started this after I finished my October socks and just knit on it for a couple of days before I started my November socks. So I haven't knit on it for a bit. And it, because it has been really hot, it hasn't really felt like the best thing to knit on. But I think it's really cool how that rainbow comes through and it has the purple and pink through it. So I think that will be pretty cool. And this is just such a lovely way to use up those sort of partial skeins. So that's something I'm working on. And then the last thing that I started working on, also a great project for using up mini skeins and partial skeins. I saw, I think on Instagram, I, I saw that Telly Bean Knits, Stephanie Lotvin, had a new cow pattern out and I I I normally test it for Stephanie so I think that I was even a while ago about this cow pattern if I wanted to test it but I had so many other things going on so I think I just sort of um didn't worry about it I, um I thought no I, I I can't do that and then now I saw it and I just really, really loved it. Um, and Stephanie has made a collection of three cows. So you can buy them individually or you can buy all three in a collection. And she had some ridiculous discount on if you purchased the whole collection when only like when the first one was released. I think they released with a couple of weeks or so in between. The second cow pattern was just released yesterday, I think. So I think 8th or 9th of November. Um, so yes, I, I saw the first cow and it's called the Dive In Cow. And I saw that it was, it was like five US dollars to buy the whole collection. And I know that Stephanie's patterns are absolutely excellent and um, she did have teasers for all three of the cows and I could see that all of them were beautiful and um, I just 
went ahead and purchased all three of them and started knitting the one that was um, out and ready to knit. Um, and it's a, um, a colorwork cow. And the reason that I thought that they would be such a great, uh, it would be such a great pattern, or all three of them would be great patterns, is that they use, I think, I'm not sure about the last one, but for the two first one, the most you need of a, a color is half a skein, about 200 meters. And then, um, some smaller amounts and we can often use mini skeins so I just thought that's that's just exactly what I need and the other thing that I think is just so great is I love knitting color work I love knitting color work yokes and it's all that I think about and it's all that I plan all that I dream about now that I have been cleaning out my studio of course I went into my stash and I've been again looking through and matching patterns and yarn and thinking about all these amazing color work yokes that I can make. But taking on a whole jumper is, is quite a lot. And I mean, there's no deadline, but I probably personally feel happier if I only have one jumper on the go at a time. I know just recently I've had more, but um, to actually feel that I'm, I'm getting something done on it I can't have too many happening but I just want to work with all the color and I thought that these cows are just perfect because it's like knitting only the yoke and not only do you get to knit only the fun bit but you also can wear it with lots of different things so I was just sold on it straight away purchased a pattern went looking in my stash for things to use so the first one is called Dive In, as I've said. <laughs> and um, if I'm clever, I'll put a photo in on the one that Stephanie made. Um, and I went stash diving and tried to find yarn that I had dyed up that was um, in amounts as close as possible to what the pattern suggests so that I didn't have a lot of leftovers, but I, did that, but I still had enough. So I found this blue one um, that I had enough for the, the main color, for the one that takes the most yarn. I had this red one. I also had a partial skein. So these I had more than, there were more than a mini skein, more than 20 grams, but not quite 50, I think. Or I think this had 50 and this had maybe 35. Anyway, it doesn't matter. And then I found two mini skeins. And I think these are mini skeins from an advent calendar. I don't know if they're both from the one that I did the warm and the cool colors. It might be from that advent calendar. I have so many mini skeins because I like to um, save some from for me. <laughs> when I make kits and advent calendars and all those things. So I have a lot of mini skeins. I have a lot of leftover pieces of mini skeins as well. Uh, and I just really need to use them up. I've actually, I'll, I'll get to that later. I'll talk about that later. So these are the three colors and you can see <gasps> so much color, so much fun. Maybe not what you would make a whole jumper in. Well, you never know. I could probably do that, but just a lot of fun for knitting cow and this is my cow so far look at that so um the three in the collection are all constructed the same way so first you need this triangle uh, flat and then you join it in the round and you need this color work in the round so i have uh i have one other um color work section left and then the border and that's that i wonder if i can wear it it's a bit hard to see what it would look like but i mean i think that's just amazing i'm so happy with it and i've already planned other colors to make it in <laughs> um so yes uh, definitely 
something that I recommend. If you like doing color work, if you'd like to add a bit of color to your wardrobe. Um, yes, so I'm almost done with this one. And um, now that I have sort of woven in ends and a lot of things, I'm just going crazy on this one. It's so much fun. And um, yes, it was hard to do all the finishing when I had this as something I could work on. But this was the treat and the other one, other things were things that I needed to get done. So I'm working on that one. The second one got, just got released. Um, I can't exactly remember what it's called. Was it Pluck It or something like that? Um, and that is a cowl. I might again be clever and put a, a photo in. But it's a cowl. It's the same shape. Might be a little bit longer. And it has sections of lace and sections of colour work. And it is beautiful. And the colours that Stephanie has in hers are just, like, they're just perfect. I think I could do it exactly the same and be super happy. But I have, again, tried to find things in my stash that might work with it. I was thinking about maybe using these leftovers from my Miss Arena and maybe add this other merino linen. I can't remember what I call this, maybe hyacinth. I can't remember this colorway, sorry. Um, maybe those, but then when I had a look, I think I, I don't have quite enough of this color. So we'll see, but I'm, I'm definitely making the second one and I'll make the third one when that gets out as well. Um, yes, they were just, um, I don't know if there were patterns that just came at a really good time for me when it was something that I was inspired to do and I had other things that I had finished so I felt like it was nice with a new fun colorful project to start um, or maybe it's, uh, you know probably is just something that I would enjoy any day any time of the year <laughs> Okay, well, that's um, a lot of things that I'm working on. I do have some plans that I was going to talk about, but I think I'll just leave that for when I actually started it. I have a few, um, oh, I'll show you. I don't know if I have shown these before. If I have, it was a while ago. I have these skeins of Norwegian wool Sulium and they are a 100% Norwegian uh, wool I, can't, I don't know how you um, translate it but um, so I have a dark purple I have a light purple and I have three skeins of this very cool green and my mum purchased them, purchased them at the mill in Norway after I had put in my wish list. And I have the whole time planned to make one of the Yennefer Steingast patterns. They're a fingering weight. Um, but I, I think it has three or four colours in the original. I think it's called, I can't remember which one, what it's called. But you can do a two color version. So I had actually decided that I was only going to use these because there wasn't enough contrast there. But then again, D stash. I found someone, sorry, who was selling an olive green of the same five skeins at a good price. Um, sorry, they go really well. And not only is it a beautiful colour and goes well with these, but I thought, because I have five, I don't need five to make a jumper for me. Um, I'm going to, or actually at the moment, right now, outside in a pot, is one of these getting a, a bit of a brown dye to it. Because I just wanted to have one as a darker colour for a bit of a contrast. So... Yes, I'll see if I'll still do the same pattern as I had um, first thought of. 
of the Yennefer Steingast pattern. I probably should make it because I've already purchased the pattern. So now I have a bit more, um, a few more options of how to combine the colours. So I'm really excited about that because it's been sitting waiting for me to work with these skeins. Uh, and now I feel more confident that I'll be able to get a colour work that um, works well. So that's that's sort of top on top of my queue at the moment. Okay, well, and now I just wanted to talk a little bit about my hand dyeing in my shop. Okay, so I have, as I said, I finished a lot of, well, I finished all of the advent calendar, 12 days of Christmas. It was a huge job and I cleaned out the studio, got everything a bit more organized and I got made space for sewing and doing other things. Um, organized my stock and um, sort of, sort of, yeah, just like a reboot a little bit, I think. And I have just had a little bit of a play with some new colorways, just having a bit of fun. And I, I don't think, did I show this last time? I did this new colorway. I haven't listed these yet. So these will come um, the weekend. Or will that be like the 14th, around the 14th of November, maybe before. Um, and I, I put it on Instagram and asked, what should I call them? And there were a lot of sort of gemstone suggestions. <laughs> maybe I'll, maybe I'll just call them gemstones. And then I had, um, I basically had four different dyes that I worked with and I created four different colorways. Let's see, with a dyed with different methods. Here is one of them, which would be like a micro stripe because half, well, most of the skein is the pink and then there's a section that is the blue, perfectly blue. They look so nice skeined up, those ones. I don't normally do things like this because it will create a bit crazy variegated or micro stripes, but lately, I have come to really enjoy working with those crazy skeins because I found ways of combining them with other colorways and other other skeins and you just get really beautiful results. Anyway, that's one new one. And then with the same colors, I created this one. So it's mostly a pale icy blue and then it has all those speckles. Don't know if I'll show. Yes, that. Those two, and then I had the same, but with a bit of um, a grey over dye. So the same colours applied in different ways, but then adding a bit of the bit of grey to make it a darker. So it has pinks coming through blue and then and they're all my delicious sock yarn and then I did one on my dandy sock yarn that's I guess I think I'll call this mermaid it's green blue and that's purple so there were just some some skeins that I'll add to the shop on the weekend then I did a dark bluey purple I had a custom order this is funny it's multitasking going not too great. Um, I had a custom order for some of my Calm Waters mohair silk and I, I dyed it up because I have the recipe for it. Ended up with this color, realized that I had put in four times the amount of, of dye just because I did not read my own recipe correctly. Luckily, I could go back and actually find what the error was so I can <laughs> can do this as a custom die. Problem now is that I ran out of one of the dies that I need so now I'm waiting for the die to be able to make more calm waters. But yeah so now I have these to go up in the shop 
And one other mohair silk is this sort of pale green with pinks and purples in it. And I just realised having, I went through my shop a bit this morning um, to get rid of things that I had sold out of so that they don't show up and, you know, take up space when people are looking through my shop. I like to sort of um, hide away things that have sold out. And I realised I only have two colourways of mohair silk available at the moment. So I think I might need to dye more of that. I didn't even realize that i had um sold the other that were there um yeah, so that's uh, some new things that will be coming up only a little bit but it's just nice with some um nice fresh colors to go up in the shop and okay and then as a last thing I just wanted to say that I do have some plans and I've mentioned this before that I was going to take some time to um, set up some new things for the shop. So my plans are and what I'm working on um, sort of behind the scene admin things and one thing I'm going to do as soon as I can <laughs> is to set up gift cards in my shop because I thought having them for Christmas is probably well the time to have them if i'm going to have gift cards at all so that's coming up um and i'm going to do a yarn club as well and i'm still thinking about what to do but i want it to be quite special so i want it to be yarn so let me tell you, instead of just being all airy-fairy about it, my plan at this moment, which is not set in stone, so it might change, would be to have a silk striping skein or the same sort of colour inspiration dye just as a normal non self striping sock skein. One or maybe even two mini skeins to go with the... 100 grams gain, a tea, because tea knitting is just the best. And I just really enjoy combining the two. So I think a tea in some form, and then, um, you know, little things like stitch markers. And yes, I just want it to be a box, an actual box of very nice, shipment to open up so i'm going to list those as soon as i have worked out the details list those for um a january february and march i think i'll start with um shipment and when i have done clubs before with mini skeins i have had the option of getting all three or just one of them and i'll just have to work those things out but that's that's quite exciting i really love um dying for those things and i'll i'll have a theme or an inspiration and yes but i i, I don't want it to be just a skein of sock yarn and a mini i want it to be a nice gift almost it's not a gift because you pay for it but you know what i mean i want it to be special i want it to be special so that's something that i i'm working on but i need to really know the details before i list it but i would like to have it listed so that if anyone wants to buy um, a club shipment as a christmas gift for someone they will be able to do so i don't know that i'll be able to get anything out before christmas but we'll see it might be that i'll do some christmas sock yarn Maybe we'll have to be dying that up this week, I think, then. So that might be coming. We'll see. Okay, but that's uh, what's happening with the shop at the moment. I'm you know, trying to um, keep busy and trying to have available what um, people like to see. So 
if there's anything that you'd like to see in my shop or anything you'd like me to see uh, do or be inspired by please let me know please let me know because um yes i'm just sort of working here in my studio and trying <laughs> trying to figure out what what to put my time into and trying to understand what will be of interest to people so yes i always um appreciate suggestions or feedback or inspiration to come my way well it's been almost an hour that i've been standing up i might actually now feel like sitting down for a bit i might um finish my cup of tea and work a little bit on my cow maybe i will cast on the second one yes <laughs> um it's a beautiful day outside our lambs have now gone back to the farm we went and visited our earlier two lambs that we had earlier in spring. We went to visit them on the farm a couple of weeks ago and they still, you know, run up to us and we could give them a cuddle and everything. And a couple of days ago we went and we dropped off the, the two lambs that we had more recently. We dropped them off at the farm to join the other ones. So they're all there together and yes, it's, it's lovely and we can go and see them when we want to. So that's good. Um, the chicken hatching is going well. I can't remember. Did we have any chickens last time? Well, we had two chickens, two chicks that successfully hatched. Um, must be four weeks ago now. And then a week ago, a week ago, we had a second batch um, hatch and we got a total of five chicks from that and then we had a third batch of eggs um that we thought were, were the best and we're going to be producing the most chicks but we only got one little chick um out of that so we now have the two older ones then five and then one so six that were born within a week uh, or hatched within a week and uh, we have four mums in total because we have two that are sort of sharing responsibility of the chicks and uh, it's now very interesting to see how they all interact and how how they sort things out who's going to be the boss and you know who who can go close to whom and yes and the chicks are so cute so cute and i love seeing them growing and see what colors and feathers they develop because these chicks um they come from a, a group of chicken and ro hens and roosters that we know what they look like, but they're all a bit different. So we don't know who the eggs, what hen the eggs come from or what rooster has been with the hen. So uh, what they will look like in the end is a little bit of a mystery. And I really love that. I think that's so cool. Yes, uh, so I might actually go and, and visit the chickens and I might take some photos and insert. I don't think I'll put a lot of video and photos in this episode because I haven't really been anywhere where I took photos. Not like last time when I had holidays to show, share with you. But maybe some chicks I can fit in. All right, everyone, I am going to go and um, I want to say thank you so much for watching and joining me here and um, letting me share with you all these things that I have been working on and that I really enjoy. Uh, if you have liked the episode, you can give it a thumbs up. And if you're, all not, if you're not already a subscriber, I would really like for you to join um, our group and subscribe to my videos. Um, thank you so much for your time and for visiting me here in my studio. I will go now before I lose all my words. So until I see you next time, take care. Bye.